questions. So I'm glad to be here with David Friedman. We're at Fest 2013. And I was wondering, as someone who's been involved in the liberty movement, pioneering some of the ideas of economic freedom and personal freedom for so long, uh, what do you consider the most promising projects as far as attaining liberty? Huh, I suppose the most co promising project already happened, namely the collapse of communism in China. And the second most promising probably would be the loss of faith in central planning in India. And neither of those affects us very much, but those have meant a sizable increase in freedom and prosperity for a couple of billion people. So that's a very large effect. As far as the U.S., it's very hard to tell. At the moment, I'm feeling optimistic about the Free State Project because I see lots of young people and kids and enthusiastic people, most of whom seem reasonably intelligent, running around, and that sort of is a good sign. But on the other hand, it's a very small part of the world population, so I'm not sure it's a big effect. Other than that, I think the Internet certainly has the potential to make things better. Uh, encryption has the potential of giving you very free society. How much of that will really be realized, I don't know, because you know, the technology itself is neither pro or anti-freedom and gets used for both good and bad purposes as we've been observing quite recently in the U.S. in the case of the NSA spying. So, I don't know, I'm not sure there's ever any one answer to those questions. My feeling is the world is usually moving in all directions at once and that some things are getting better and some things are getting worse. I think Faith in catastrophic global warming is declining, and that's a good thing because I don't. I think there were good arguments for thinking that global warming was happening, but not very good arguments for thinking that it was going to be catastrophic, and it was providing an excuse for governments doing things, and we don't need more excuses for governments doing things. Uh, so that's one positive change. Uh, School vouchers seem to be beginning to catch on, and that's a positive change because it means the next generation will get better educated. Uh, I don't think there is any one answer to a question like that. Now, inciting uh, like the collapse of certain repressive systems, like in China and Soviet Union and in India, um, do you look to any possible, or do you see a threat in any sorts of human rights organizations internationally, like attaining power? Um, do you think that like maybe the UN is as much of a threat as some people make it out to be, as far as infringing on human rights? I doubt that the UN has got the resources to infringe on human rights very effectively, and I suspect that if the human right, if the UN tells China to do something, they probably won't do it or India, or many other countries. Uh, so no, now of course China is not a free society, but it's a whole lot freer than it was 20 or 30 years ago. So that's, you know, it's probably the less free society than the US on the whole, but it's still a big change in the right direction. And in general, I'm in favor of diversity, not in the common modern sense as a euphemism for affirmative action, but in the sense of actual diversity. And I think a world where there are a bunch of different reasonably powerful countries with different ideas and cultures and such, it's going to be harder to block anything. That if you, if you think about possible technological changes that could have good or bad effects, if there's one country, things can be stopped if some people think they have a bad effect. If there are 10 countries, it's a lot harder because if nine of them stop it, the 10th gets a big advantage by you know developing smarter computers or ending aging or things like that. Uh, so in that sense, I think the rise of other powers is on the whole a good thing. Uh, <coughs> but I don't know. I don't think there. I don't have good, good short, good one-liner answers for the same. Just hope the world gets saved. And from an economic point of view, do you put much confidence in the rising digital currencies, or do you think that uh, the market needs that's to test very, them that, more? That's very interesting. Uh, Bitcoin is clearly an ingenious idea. I would be happier with it when I, if I was more confident that it was going to work out as an anonymous digital currency, and there are apparently ways of making it such, but it isn't automatically such. Uh, it seems to be doing surprisingly well for the last couple of years, and that would be really great. I've been predicting the rise of an anonymous e-cash for much too long, since it hasn't happened yet, and I think it would be a good thing. It will have some bad results. It'll make kidnapping more profitable, because it means you can do the payoff anonymously, but it will also make it much harder for governments to control people, and on average, governments are much more of a threat than private criminals are. So, from that standpoint, I think that if you do get a real anonymous digital currency, that would be a good thing, not a bad thing. Cool. Well, thanks for speaking right. with me. Thank you. Yeah, I blog at freekeen.com if you want to right. check it out.